Hi, it's Corey. I am calling to you from Rome, Italy, and as I posted on Facebook a couple of days ago, I'm going to start giving you guys some recipes to use back home. And for the last three years, I've been able to have the utmost pleasure of living in Rome, Italy. Uh, for all of us around the world, we may not know much about Italy. I didn't know anything about Italy before I came here, but it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. I've uh, been to Florence, I've uh, been to Siena, uh, there's still a lot of other places yet to go, but one of my favorite loves being here is the food. The food here in Italy is, it's, it's not just to eat, it's a, it's a culture. It's everybody being around the table, everybody sharing stories, everybody enjoying the food, which is one thing where I'm from in America you don't always have a lot of time to do because you know everybody's working, kids have school, all of that. So normally dinner time is hurry up and eat and get to your homework, get to your work, get other things done. But one thing that I love here every day for lunch or dinner, you just have a chance to sit down and relax and enjoy the food. And today I'm going to be making a typical Roman meal of carbonara. Uh, uses pancetta, uh, pecorino. Uh, Wolva, uh, for those of you who are not exactly sure what that is, basically bacon, uh, cheese, and eggs. And when I first heard of a pasta with bacon, cheese, and eggs, I'm like, it sounds weird, but it's got like so many of my favorite things in it. So uh, anyway, you guys sit back. I'm going to show you everything that you're going to need, everything to prepare it and how to prepare it. And hopefully you guys can try it out for your family. So uh, let me grab my apron. Because, you yeah, know, you need to have a cool little apron when you cook. Just don't want to get yourself all dirty. And another thing that I've noticed here in Italy is that wine is a big part of a lot of the meals that you prepare. And me from America, we like to use wine too, but in a slightly different way. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and let's get to it. Alright, so guys, I've got everything here that we're going to need to make our traditional Roman carbonata this afternoon. I'm uh, going to start off with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to put in my pan to get hot. This is also going to be for our pancetta and our onion. I'll let that get hot for a minute. I've already got my pan of water here for the pasta. I'm going to put a good handful of kosher salt in there. Always remember your salt. Uh, the one thing that will screw up any pasta that you make is the lack of salt in your pasta. Also, you do not want to overcook or undercook. Whatever the directions call for when you're uh, getting ready to cook the pasta, make sure that you do that and I'll show you later how to make sure that your pasta is ready. So I've got our pancetta already cubed up here. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to our hot oil. We're gonna let this cook and get nice and almost brown before we start. Uh, one of your other main ingredients that you need is a good wooden spoon. Make sure to get your pancetta or your bacon all spread around so it gets covered in the oil there real good. So while that is getting brown, what you want to do is take your egg and go ahead and crack those open and get just to your yolk. Uh, when you are cooking your pasta, and especially when you're using egg, you want to use freshest eggs that you can find. Uh, fresher eggs, the better. Get these at your Whole Foods or any farmer's market that you may go to. Just the yolk seems to be a lot more yummy to me. Also for carbonara, you want to use about uh, two yolks for person, per person that you're cooking for. 
So if you're only cooking lunch for two, use you about four eggs, but just the yolk. I know, I know, egg whites are so healthy for you, but you know what, we're cooking pasta, we're not trying to be healthy. So anyway, we've got our egg in our pan. I'm gonna take a little bit of salt, add that to it. I'm gonna take a little bit of fresh ground pepper, add that in there as well. And if you want your eggs to be really creamy, take a little bit of uh, extra heavy whipping cream, add that in there. We're gonna whip that all up still while our bacon is cooking. And good multitaskers, go ahead and throw their bacon up while they're doing that. So one good key to your pancetta is making sure that your bacon is nice and crispy uh, before you get ready to add in all of your other stuff. That's almost about ready. We're going to add in our onions here in a minute. And give our egg a few more twirls. I want your eggs to be like really, really dense with it with it good. Uh, get a lot of bubbles in there. Like I said, we're going to do this again before we actually put it into our mixture later. And you're going to take a little bit of your pecorino, add that into your eggs. And again, give that a good whisking. So we're going to come back to that again here later. Bacon is almost about ready to add our onions to it. I know a lot of people, especially friends of mine, are not real big fans of onion, but this dish really needs the onion in it. It's got a great flavor and just mixes really well with the, uh, the pancetta and the oil. And again, you want all of this to cook to where your onions are soft and your bacon is crispy. And if you're worried about the amount of the fatty taste from the bacon, you can add some of your wine uh, to that while it's cooking. This kind of helps take away a little bit of the fatty taste from that. But anybody that knows me knows I'm not really concerned so much about the fat. So our pancetta is now ready. I'm going to take this off the fire, move it to the back, let our water for the pasta get good and going, and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, so as you can see, our water is now boiling. I'm uh, going to put our pasta in. When it comes to the pasta that you want to use, it's really a matter of taste. Um, any of your bigger rounder pastas, you want to use those just because for me the, the taste is a lot better. We've got our mezza mama. <laughs> We've got this one, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Mezza Monica. That's my director behind me yelling at me because three years in Italy and I still can't speak the language. Uh, or you've also got your tortellini, rigatoni. Rigatoni, <laughs> which as you can also see is a, a bigger pasta but not quite as big as the one that we're going to use today. Uh, but either one of those that you want to use are really good. Uh, the one that we're using today calls for uh, about 10 minutes cooking time. And as you can see, there are two of us that are going to be eating today and I've got a little under four cups of pasta. I want to keep about two, two cups of uncooked pasta per person. If you're on a diet, eat less. If you're hungry, eat more. And it's really depending on how you feel that day. I'm going to go ahead and put that in, give it a quick stir around, and go ahead and set our timer. And I will be back to you in about 10 minutes. All right, so we're just about to the 10 minute mark. So I'm going to go ahead and test our pasta. Just take one, pull it off for a second. In order to find out if it's ready or not, I'm trying to take a bite. I want just a little bit of the whiteness left to it. It's still very hot. And give that another stir or two and we'll be ready to go. Just run 
take and strain our pasta. Do not rinse your pasta. And add this back into our pan and add our pancetta and our onion. around get all of that in there take some of our pecorino add that in give that a good mix get it all coated up real well and at this point you want to turn your fire off give your eggs a really good whisk get lots of bubbles in there make it real fluffy and then we're just going to stir this and the pasta is going to cook the egg if for some reason uh, your pasta cools off in the process turn your heat back on very very low just to warm it back up a little bit continue to stir but do not overcook your pasta now that our pasta is ready Two scoops right in the middle of your plate. We'll take a little extra of our pecorino stick on top. We'll take our black pepper, just a little dusting, and there we are. We'll see you guys at the table. All right, so as you can see, that took roughly about 30 minutes from start to finish, and here we are sitting at the table with our uh, plate of Roman carbonata. I uh, really hope that you guys like this. Uh, there will be more uh, recipes coming soon. I said all of them are essentially different, uh, different flavors, different textures. Uh, there's red sauces, white sauces. But anyway, I hope you guys uh, really enjoy this and sit down and enjoy your carbonara. Bon appetito.